All right, guys, this is a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield in 9mm. This is probably not the first review you've seen on it, but this is my review. Let's kick it on back to the table. Stand by. All right, guys, go to Boy 32 here. Check it out. And this is another mission on what is in the box. Now, I'm going to give you guys a couple different guesses. Um, it uh, starts with an S. The second word starts with a W. Yeah, of course. It's a Smith & Wesson. You guys have all seen these things before. This is my review of this. This is the tabletop review of the Smith & Wesson m and Shield. Now, you're asking, why in the world did you go out and buy one of these things? They've been around for 100 years, and exactly. That's the reason why I went out and bought one, got a real good deal on this guy. And ultimately, people, I wanted something to compare it with this guy right here, the PPS. And we went out the other day and shot these things up 50 yards. First time I ever picked this thing up, I was nailing the target at 50 yards. Now, that is with a 3.1-inch barrel, 9-millimeter. 115 green round nose. Well, anyway, here it is, man. This is going to be my tabletop review. We're going to take this thing out. We're going to have a lot of fun with it. I'm a big fan of the Smith & Wesson line. These M&Ps are awesome. All right, so let's talk about this thing, man. First of all, this is the Smith & Wesson M&P. This is 9mm. They also come in a 45. Pick this thing up, slightly used, but I tell you what, man really nice gun and it came with all the parts and pieces in the box and i always tell people if you're going to buy something new try to get it with the box because if you turn around and you want to get rid of it it's a little bit more marketable if it does have the box and everything along with it all right so in the box you're going to get this you're going to get this really cool locking system right there and at least this one doesn't have a locking mechanism in the gun itself uh, we've got the expended round right here You've got point blank range down here in Matthews, North Carolina is when I picked this thing up with and a spare magazine. This is a seven round mag. The one that is in the firearm itself now is the eight round mag. Strike one for the PPS. Here's an owner's manual. Congratulations, protect your investment, yada, yada, yada. Here is something. Oh, that's the bill of sale. And the kids, keep them safe. Yada, yada, yada. All right, so let's go ahead and put all this stuff back where it belongs. We'll go ahead and leave the spare magazine out. And again, my biggest pet peeve with Smith & Wesson, and I guess you got to buy one of their real expensive guns to get it in a bag or something other than that. But uh, guys, everybody's got these really cool carrying cases, and you're still using these cardboard boxes. If you got to have a pet peeve, that's one of them. And if one of your only complaints is the cardboard box, I guess the gun's pretty good. Let's set this thing to the side here real quick. Okay, so anyway, this is a 9mm. The thing has a 7 plus 1 or 8 plus 1. This one's equipped with a thumb safety. Now, here's a cool thing. One of my original thoughts was I was going to go ahead and pick this thing up for my wife, of course. And, you know, me personally, I'm not a big fan of a safety on a striker fire firearm. As you can see right here, this guy right here does not have a safety pretty nice and this one does so the advantages are new person who's new to carrying a firearm can carry this but uh, a lot of people have an issue with the thumb safety I know the Yankee Marshall had it in his little fanny pack when he worked out at the gym and I know that you know sometimes when you have it in your fanny pack it might might enable the safety so you know what you might want to do is go ahead when you train with this thing and push it down but the nice thing is is either on or off no big deal there 3.1 inch barrel overall length of 6.1 Three dot sights, you got one dot in the front, two in the rear. And I can tell you what, this bad boy is on the freaking money. Striker fire, the thing has got a polymer lower grip and frame. Basically 20.8 ounces empty. The barrel is stainless steel, slide stainless steel, French polymer. Has an arm over night finish. Matte black, pretty good for concealed carry. I don't know, they say it's good for law enforcement, maybe as a backup. But uh, that's basically it. I know a lot of the cops like to carry the uh, bodyguard as their backup or a uh, ankle weapon. This wouldn't be a bad ankle weapon, really, truly. It's not that heavy. But in comparison speaking, we'll do a little comparison here in a minute, but I'm going to actually do a full-blown comparison ride between the two of the best single-stack firearms on the market, the PPS and the MMP. So we do our uh, reviews, we do them from the rear to the front as usual. That way we cover everything in the whole ordeal here. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and go over the top. Three dot sights. This is not an adjustment period. You're supposed to hammer this thing back and forth to go ahead and adjust the windage. Nice scallop serrations right here. I love the MMP Shield logo right there. Very nice. Not really caring about this caution capable of firing with magazine removed. And it's one of the things, uh, one of my good friends, Mel, who also 
let me just clarify this, is the proud to owner to Right to Bear Customs actually made this holster for me for this guy right here. And if I can make sure that you guys can see it, there it is. M&P, Smith & Wesson, go to boy 32. Now check this out, man. Watch how nice this thing fits. For a leather holster, very nice. And I can't wait to go ahead and wear it. This is probably going to be my CCW of the month next month. Now I've quit doing those videos since, eh, I just, just got boring. And there were a lot of work to actually do that. But in any case, uh, here you go. So, Mel, thank you so much. Beautiful finish on that leather. Stitching is incredible. A lot of people say hybrid holsters. This is a true hybrid. He just didn't take the Kydex and bolt it onto a piece of leather. So I really appreciate it. The OD green is pretty cool. Or is that, what is that? Reptile green? Frog shit green? I'm not sure. Front to rear, we're talking about this. Now, it's got this little peep sight hole. A lot of people say that's a loaded chamber indicator. That is not a loaded chamber indicator. That's a peep hole that you can look down and see if there's a piece of brass in there. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those. I either like something physical or just leave the damn thing off. It has an extractor right here, but the stainless steel slide is very nice. And as you can see, this I got this used, and you really can't tell. All right, so we got a safety right there. Striker fired, of course. Bang. Got a little dingus thingy, little hinge trigger as usual. You got the slide release or slide lock, as Smith & West would like to indicate to all their armorers. To take it down, all you got to do, you lock it to the rear, pull this down, bring it up, click, you're done. Now, it's got a capture drive rod, spring, the drive rod is polymer. I don't ever plan on changing these things out. The barrel is 3.1 inches. Now, they don't tell me how many landings it has in there, but uh, I'll tell you one thing. I was impressed with the uh, accuracy coming out of this little bad boy right there. Machining, the tooling, everything looks really good in there. Firing pin block right there. Striker, there's your little spring-loaded striker fleece. And it's got a little polymer piece right here on the end of it. Not a big fan of uh, putting plastic onto the stainless, but eh, what do you do? Let's go ahead and put it back together again. It's a typical locking mechanism right there. Put it together, you just put your driver spring in, and there you go. Now this is a typical striker fire. We've got some uh, aluminum or metal steel uh, hubs right here, glides for your rails. Pretty neat, there's the ejector. Everything appears to be in good shape. When you pop that safety up, keeps it from going to the rear, put it back down, there you go. You can see the safety actuating right in there. Watch, you see that? Watch again, that's an order. Let's go ahead to put it back together, you just put your rails together, boom, boom, put it back, boom. You are. All right, so looking at the grips, basically you've got these areas in here that are matching of the M&P line, but these are not removable. They're not adjustable. Okay, so let's go ahead and check that trigger. It's not going to be a very precise trigger. I mean, we've got things, oh, I don't know, like the <laughs> TSO Orange, and uh, man, what a gun. That thing was unbelievable. This guy right here comes in just a little bit under seven pounds. Let's go ahead and do that one more time because with this hinge trigger, a lot of times it's tricky to get a trigger pull on there, but you wanna put the trigger or put your trigger pull tester thingamajigabob right there in the apex of the trigger. And right there, it's just a tad over seven. So we're gonna say around about a seven pound trigger. Okay, thing came with eight round magazine, a seven round magazine, and I'll be quite honest with you, uh, Tim at the Military Arms Channel, he said his biggest beef was this guy right here, and I am will agree with him. I absolutely hate this thing. Uh, unlike the PPS, this is stationary and attached as part of the base plate. I'm not even a big fan of this guy right here because when you go to load, this actually will slide around, but when you go to load this magazine, that thing will pull up. And not only that, but when you go to shoot and you got this thing in here, my pinky wants to move it around. And I'm not a big fan of that at all. All right, but one of the cool things about these magazines, these things are readily available in either seven or eight round magazines. I know that Big Johnson, he loves those hive extensions and he carries the 45 version, which I actually wish they had the 45 version. You're going to give up one or two rounds, but man, you're carrying a lot of beef in a 230 grain bullet versus 150 grain HSTs, which was this guy's gonna be carrying. All right, so let's see here. How much does it weigh? Well, we already said that, 20.8 ounces. But let's go ahead and do a real quick comparison because the PPS is a hunk of steel 
and it comes in empty at one pound 5.7 ounces and this guy right here comes in at one pound 4.9 ounces so is one ounce a big difference eh i don't think so some people do they count the ounces like they do pounds not me so what do i think about this i'm excited about this pistol i'm really excited about carrying it around one of the other things that I have found is that I'm actually starting to use this clinger holster a little bit more, and we'll go over that in another video. But this, guys, is a really cool gun. Very nicely made Smith & Wesson. I mean, come on. Their shield line, the M&P line, have gone a long way. It's pretty much turned the company around, and they've done a great job. This pistol is not a joke. All right, so anyway, that's it. This is my general assessment. I'm looking forward to carrying this thing. We're going to be doing a lot of shooting with it. I'm going to take it out to the range. We'll do a range review on it, and we're going to do a cross comparison with the two best, most ultimate single stack nine millimeters on the market. <laughs> All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it. If you got any questions, please don't hesitate in leaving them in this comment section down below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless those men, women, in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Because freedom is not free. I'm not a big fan of that short stack, but it is what it is. Go to Boy32. Out. Oh, 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 oh. Wait a minute. Hold on. Yeah, there we go. Now she's home. <laughs>